At running back, our perception, I think it, based on the way we talk about running back a lot in DFS, is that we want our running backs in games where the team is heavily favored. And this makes sense because if they're favored, it means they're more likely to be able to run the ball late in the game and amp up the volume for the running back. That perception makes sense, but it's also pretty far off from what we saw in perfect lineups this past year. We had 45 running backs in perfect lineups, and 28 of them were in games with a spread of less than 5 points. That is 62% of our perfect running backs. And remember, only 50% of all games this year were in that category. That's a big number. Only 4 running backs on perfect lineups came from teams favored by 10 or more points. Only 8 were favored by 5 or more points, so it was the close games that got us the best action once again. If you're looking for a potential explanation for this, it's that we need running backs to be involved in the passing game to make the cut. And if they're way ahead, they don't have to pass. They're not going to get targets. If you look at the average perfect running back from this past year, they had 4.4 receptions for 44.1 yards per game. Only two running backs made the perfect lineup without having a single catch. And only 10 made it with less than three. So 10 out of 45 had less than three catches, which means that 35 out of uh, out of 45 had three or more catches. It actually may be a slight negative for a team's back to be way up if it means they're going to get less work in the passing game. So yeah, we had guys like Derrick Henry who made the cut, who were in perfect lineups, but they are more the exception than the rules. We should not be looking for Derrick Henry type guys going forward. In general, you want your running backs to catch a lot of passes. This was especially true for the cheaper running backs who made the cuts. Looking overall this year, 21 of 45 running backs who made a perfect lineup had a salary under $7,000. So 21 value running backs. Those guys had almost equal passing game work to the more expensive backs. The big difference between the cheaper backs and the expensive backs is that the cheaper backs averaged 98.7 rushing yards per game, whereas the backs at $7,000 or higher averaged 130.5. And that's a big split, but again, the passing game work was pretty equal. This gives us a really good blueprint for finding cheaper backs for DFS. Let's say a player is moving into a larger role in his offense, whether it's due to some change in the team, an injury, something else. If that back moving into the bigger role is likely to get work as a pass catcher, we want to be aggressive with those players. We'll have an episode on uh, ownership later on as well and how well popular players did. We're going to see something very similar there where we want to use value backs moving into passing game roles. If they're going to be used as a two-down guy who is not likely to get targets, it's a very different discussion. And there, you can give some consideration to not using that player. 13 of 21 cheaper running backs this year made the cuts, experienced some sort of role change, and most of those players got work in the passing game included in their role change. So that should be a key question we ask ourselves when trying to decide whether to trust a value back. Will they get passing game work? If so, lock them in. They're probably going to be a really good play. If not, that's where things get a little bit dicey. So the key takeaways at running backs based on perfect lineups is that work in the passing game is not required. However, it takes a it takes a lot of rushing work in order to pay off if you're not going to get work as a pass catcher. And you need a, a big point total, and it's so much easier to get there if the guy is getting work in the passing game. So it's not required, but it's heavily, heavily encouraged. And that is especially true for value guys moving into larger roles. And because of this, we should again target close games rather than teams that will be able to coast to victory. So close games big for game stacks, huge for running backs as well.